This is Sharif Medawar. I'm so glad you got to join me today. We are going to talk about residential care facilities. This is one of the big topics from the commercial real estate roundtable events that we do. And I brought you a friend, an expert, and someone who just even closed a deal just a few days ago. I have with me Gene Garino. Gene, how are you? I'm good. Thank you, Sharif. Gene, I'm going to let you fly with it. I want you to go for it. I want you to share everything like you did with me last time. And we just um, hand it over to you. Tell us about your background a little bit so everybody gets to know you. And I want people to get excited about this because it's from residential into commercial. And it's just a great thing for people to know. Please go ahead. Thank you, Sharif. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I am so excited to share this with you, and some of you are going to relate to this because you have family members that have been a part of this. And I'm going to share with you how you can make money from this as well as help other people. So a little background on me. I am a certified financial planner in the U.S. as well as Australia. Real estate-wise, I bought my first property at the age of 18. No money down because I had no money. My first true commercial property was age 25. I did some conversions in between there, but I've been in real estate for a long, long time, and I've had 16 businesses over the past 35 years, a musician, recording label, rec record, uh, record label, and a studio, and real estate investing, financial planner, and I've trained thousands of people all over. And right now I'm focusing on just one thing, the residential care facilities. So that's what I'm here to share with you. And I've had the privilege of training over 100,000 people in four countries. And my biggest achievement is I've been married for 27 years to a wonderful woman and four wonderful kids. I'm actually uh, going to be having my first grandchild this August. So that's the point of life that I'm in right now. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Very exciting. I can't believe it. So how long have you been training, Gene? I know you, since I've known you, you've been training. It's been, what, over – I've known you for 13 years or so. Yeah, it's been over 20 years that I've actually, you know, trained people. Um, I've been investing for a long, long time, but then people ask you, hey, can you share it with me? And before you know it, you're in front of a group of people and then traveling all over the world, and I love to do it. Great. Yeah. Well, let's jump right into it. We all know that the purpose of real estate investing is, you know, getting cash now or cash flow or cash later, but I love the idea of getting all three in one, that that concept right there is going to resonate when we talk about the residential care facilities. And we know from real estate investing, you can do residential, which is one to four family and commercial, which is five plus units. It could be a hotel. It could be a golf course. And raw land is a great investment, but it's long term. But can we get the best of all three and combine them? And I think we can in the residential care facilities. So what is it? You know, let's define this. So we really know what it is. It's a group home for seniors providing 24-hour care and providing all of their basic needs, including cooking, cleaning, and general help. That's what it is. And in this case, it's in a home in a neighborhood. It's not going to be what we typically think of this. Now, this is a typical nursing home. Looks like a big institution. Put some barbed wire on there, and it could be a prison, right? That's not what we're talking about. It's not a medical facility with nurses and doctors and, you know, beds going down the hall. And it's not the Golden Girls. Now, people my age remember that show, four mature women living in a house. They had their own space, and they took care of each other. It's somewhere in between those two where they're going to have help, but it's not a nursing home, and it's not the Golden Girls. It's somewhere in between. So what does that really look like? Well, here. These are residential care facilities in neighborhoods just like yours and mine. Now, notice they're mostly single level stairs, right? If we have a two or three story, may need an elevator, but these right here are assisted living facilities in neighborhoods just like we all are very familiar with. So it's going to look and feel like a home, and it is a home for these 10 residents that live in that home. So now that we know what it is, one of the questions I always get, Sharif, is people ask me, do I have to be a doctor or a nurse? And the answer is no. Anybody can do this. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. But I do have people that I have hired who now are the facility managers and the caregivers, and they are certified, and they have their own requirements and licensing, but not me. I have the real estate, and I have the business, but others are running it on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes. So then the other question kind of comes down to, well, who pays for it? If somebody's living in this home, is it insurance? Is it Medicare? Is it Social Security? And the answer is it could be, but the real money and the magic is in the private pay. That's when me, I'm paying with my brothers and sisters for mom to be taken care of. Uh, we were, I was just at one of my homes this, this afternoon at lunch, and we had a couple of kids, quote-unquote, they're 60 years old, who are paying for their mom to come into the home. So they're the ones who are going to be paying three and four thousand dollars a month. So, yeah. you know, that's the person who's paying, and that's private pay, and that's the sweet spot. 
So I know the big question people have is, well, how much money can I make on this? So I'm going to go through in, in yes. true Sharif Medawar style, and we're going to go through the fax system, and we're going to see exactly how this works, because I know that you really want to get to it. So let me show you with one deal how much you can make. And I really like to show it to you this way, because literally one deal can set you up, set you up for some of you for life. Now, one deal, how much can you make? Well, I'm going to run through the numbers as an example. I want you to start thinking about a house, not as renting it out for the house, but renting it out per bed. And when I say 3000 per person per month, these people who are living in these homes are paying an average in the U.S. is $3,241. That's the average. Some more, some less. I've met people who are paying $12,000 a month to live in a bedroom inside these homes. Now, that's a really nice home, but it's a home. So when I say 3000 that really is an average price. We're going to use our math that way. And typically, we're looking for 10-bed homes, licensed for 10 beds. You can do it less, but from an economies of scale standpoint, you're going to have the same expenses for 5-bed versus 7 versus 10. So 10-bed is really the sweet spot. When you get bigger than 10-bed, now you're into a residential care uh, a facility of a different level where it's different licensing, and we're not looking for that. This is going to be a home in the neighborhood, 10 people or less. 10 is the sweet spot. So three grand times 10 is 30,000 monthly gross income. So now you've already thought it through. What are my expenses? Well, you can roughly figure half of that. So half of that, 15,000 a month is your overhead. And that's going to include your caregivers. That's the people taking care of the residents. The facility manager, that's the person who's licensed to take care of the entire business. The food, the insurance, uh, all the maintenance and so on. It's about 15,000. Now, those of you who have, you're good students of Sharif, so I know you know this, there's one piece missing right here, and that's the real estate portion. So let's just assume for a minute that it's $5,000 PITI, principal interest taxes and insurance, for the real estate, whether we rent it or own it. And that's a key, and I'll come back to it, because we could just rent it and do this. But let's say you own it. It's principal interest taxes and insurance of five grand. So 30 minus 15 minus five still leaves you with $10,000 per month net income. That's pretty good, and when you add that up for a year, that's 120 grand. And Sharif, I think a lot of people listening here, you know, some of them anyway, have never made $100,000 a year. And just the thought of $100,000 a year in income is pretty yeah. incredible to some people. So I want them just to think on that for a moment. And then realistically, this is something where you're not there 9 to 5. You're not working 40 or 60 hours a week, and you can't get fired. You own it. It's yeah. pretty sweet to have that kind of residual income. Yeah, so. especially that it's uh, business and, and real estate, so you can have a lot of tax deductions and practically keep most of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you can write off so many things. You know, every time I drive there, the food, and there's so many things. So, okay. yeah, we didn't even talk about that part, and uh, I know that's a whole other training right there. But awesome. when you talk about the residential care facilities, it really is the best of all worlds. Everybody has to live someplace. Commercial, Sharif has taught you all about triple net leases and the magic of that. If you own the real estate, you could lease it to me. I'll lease it from you. I'll do a 10-year lease with 10-year renewals, triple net. I would love to do that then you own the real estate and I'll just lease it from you and run the business or vice versa. But you get it. And land, farming the land, I use that term, whether you have a driving range or you're planted corn, it's the land and that real estate. I, I live in Arizona and I'm looking out my back window right here and I live on a golf course and there's homes even in this neighborhood that people can't sell because they're too big. Nobody wants to live in that big of a home. Well, guess what? Perfect opportunity for a residential care facility. So yeah. you could own it's the home now. Explain it triple net for those that may not know. Oh, got it. That's where the landlord themselves, the owner of the property who's leasing it out, the tenant is taking care of the taxes, insurance, and maintenance. I call it Tim. The tenants mm -hmm. take care of Tim. They pay the property taxes, they pay the property insurance, and they take care of all the maintenance. And uh, that's a great way when you own property to lease it to somebody else and say, you take care of all of those expenses so you know exactly what you're getting each and every month. And with commercial, it's typically long term. I mean, if I'm going to lease it, I want the longest term possible because I can't just move my business. I want to lease that house for 10 years and have the option to buy it. So we'll get into all that. And timing really is the key, and we know that from the fax system. But when we talk about timing in this situation, I'm going to give you some headlines from the newspaper. This comes, this is January of 2011, so two years ago. Article says, ready or not, first baby boomers turn 65 this year. Now, 
we all know that our population is aging, but the baby boomers, the sweet spot between 1946 and 64, they're turning 65 at an unbelievable rate. 10,000 people a day are turning 65. Now, there's 77 million baby boomers, and 10,000 a day are turning 65. Now, not all of them are going to check into a residential care facility, but 1,000 or 2,000 over the course of their next X number of years will. And they're going to move into somebody's home and pay three, four, five thousand 5,000 a month. It's either going to be me, or it's going to be you, or it's going to be somebody else. This is a two-decade opportunity in real estate. And I see this. That's why I'm jumping in both feet. I mean, it's just amazing, these numbers. Mm. So you get the best of all worlds. Residential, everybody needs shelter. Commercial, the triple net lease, the timing. We get 10,000 potential clients every day. And the income opportunity, the ability to create this business and then have lifetime cash flow. Even get one for each one of your kids and pass it on to them when you pass on. So each one of them has lifetime income. And you can do good and do well. I mean, I love the ability that I'm taking care of people that the way I think about it, Sharif, is I'm going to have a place that I would move my own mom into. And if it's good enough for mom, it's good enough yeah. for everybody else. Great and that's great. one of the reasons why I'm doing it. Yeah, it's because I want to do good and help other people, and I want to do well. There's nothing wrong with making money. And I know a lot of people have big hearts, and they want to help people, but they're poor. Well, you can't help other people unless you help yourself first. So yes. do good. Do well. Make ten grand a month or twelve grand a month and give it away if you want. Go get a second home for yourself. But doing good and doing well, I think, can go hand in hand, and this allows it to happen. So let's bring it right down into, you know, Sharif Medawar language right here, the fax system. We all know this. You gotta find it. You know, how do you find the best property in the best location? Let me give you a little insight here, and then I'm gonna give you some more information as I go through some of the other slides. First, we know that when people retire just in general in the US, they kind of move to the Sunbelt states. So if we think large states, Florida's great, Arizona's great, Texas is great, but people retire in every state, in every community. So this is going on all over the country, but if you wanted to pick states, it would be the sunshine states. Then inside each city, when we talk about location, here's the key and kind of the secret to this whole thing. It's who's paying the bill. The people that I was sitting with lunch today, they're 60 years old, where do they live? I want to have the facility that lives that is close to them because it's about them coming to visit mom and then paying the bill. So I want to make sure it's convenient for them. So the secret there is no matter what city you're in, go to the best neighborhoods, the people with the biggest money. They're going to put mom in a home someplace. It may as well be your home in their neighborhood. And if it's literally in the same neighborhood, how sweet is it for them to go three blocks away and just visit mom right there? Yes. So the best properties in the best locations, and then best properties, single level, multi-level you can do, but you might have to have chair lifts or you might have to have elevators. Uh, but the residents, that's one thing. The family and who's paying for it is, is really the, the key point as to the location. And I'm going to get into more detail, but I just wanted to give you that much. You know, analyzing it, it all starts with the first thing, which is can I do this home in this house? So you might find a great house and it's a great deal, but the first thing you need to do is take the address and you simply call the Department of Health Services, so DHS, in your city, in your state, and say, here's the address. Can I put a residential care facility at this address? And the reason why that's important is most communities will limit the number of homes that can be in a certain neighborhood or geographical area. Uh, Maricopa County, where I am in Arizona, each one of the cities has a distance. It might be 900 feet or 1,200 feet, or in uh, the house that I just got last week, it's 1,350 feet. So what that means is there can't be another 10-unit uh, assisted living or residential care facility within 1,350 feet of that house. If there is, I can't have 10 people. I can have up to five now, five is okay, but 10 is much better. My expenses are pretty much the same. So the first thing is address, checking with the uh, Department of Health Services to see if it can be in that. Now, if it can, then the next step is, what do I have to do to this home to retrofit it, to get it proper? And Sharif, we were having a conversation about this today. How wide are the hallways? How wide are the doorways? Yeah. You know, probably it's a home. It doesn't have a sprinkler system, so you might have to install a sprinkler system. That sounds hard, but it's really not. You know, somebody yeah. runs the pipes through the attic, and five thousand dollars later, you got a sprinkler system. And then trends. When we talk about local trends, it's really the national trend, the baby boomers that we're talking about. But from a local standpoint, some people they're going to be born in upstate New York, and they're going to live there for their entire life. Even though it's snowy during the winter, they're not going to move to Florida. 
But if they are going to move from upstate New York, it probably is Florida. If they're in Chicago, they're going to move to Arizona. It's so funny, but that's exactly what happens. <laughs> Chicago moves to Arizona. New York moves to Florida. It's like you can separate it with a knife. So there's local trends, but the national trend is they go to the sun states, but they're all over. Control. Controlling the real estate. And this really comes down to your skill in negotiating, and that is such a skill. But the ability to negotiate, and whether you lease the property or you purchase the pro property, it's a matter of getting control, and typically that means getting it under contract. Because we might just get a contract with an option to buy or a contract with the right to assign it to somebody else. And that negotiation really leads into the S, which we'll get to on the strategize, but first timing. You know, when you first find the property, I gave you the first step, which is can I do it here? Then the next step is getting the inspector in to say what do we need to do to this house to get it to be proper for this purpose? And then we need time to get financing. Now, if we go to a bank, if they lend you the money, right, <laughs> if they lend you the money, it's going to be a two- to three-month process. If I have private financing uh, set up, we could do it pretty quickly. Now, we have syndication down here because I'm sure Sharif has taught you about syndication and what a master he is at that. Uh, we're actually going to be putting together a syndication for this exact purpose, right, Sharif? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Gene and I are working on a great syndication to be able to have all these investors that are interested to get into residential care facility, but they don't have all the means to do it, and maybe they're afraid it's the first one. We're going to group these people together, do the syndication under Sharif and Gene, and you guys can join us and get it going. And then you can, those that actually join the syndication can get also to learn it in more details. And then if they want to branch out on their own, hey, more power to them. Yes. That's a great thing, and I love the way you put things together, Sharif. It's so helpful for everyone. And then strategize, the final piece of the fact system, the ability to strategize, and there's more than one way to do everything. So I love being creative. My musician side comes out, but managing it prof profitably with its highest and best use. For instance, the property that I'm going to show you, and I'll give you some pictures. Sharif mentioned I closed on one just last week. I'll show you the pictures. We renamed it to Adagio Gardens because we're going to turn the whole backyard into a, a beautiful garden with fountains because this is going to add value. When we talk about highest and best use, it might just be adding value to this exact house so that Absolutely. our customers, the residents, are going to pay more. Yeah. Got it. So uh, on finding staff, uh, I know we, you went through the fact system, but finding staff uh, is always a concern. So you're going to touch on that later on? Let me touch on it right now. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, and I asked Sharif to do this because if there's things that he's thinking, I know you're thinking it too as you're listening. So the staff, number one, rest assured, you're not going to be the caregiver. You're not going to be the facility manager. You can if you want, but that's not your highest and best use. If it's your calling, that's great. But how do you find these people? Well, first of all, the caregivers and the facility managers have to get licensed. So they're going to go through a state licensing procedure. The easiest way to find them is to go right to the state where they get the license and say, when is the class? Is there a bulletin board? Put an ad right there. I'm looking for a facility manager. Or talk to the instructor and say, hey, I'm looking to hire somebody. Who did you just teach and who are your best students that you had? Who do you think is going to be good? Now, another little secret to that, too, is there's a whole group of people that place seniors in these care homes. So you can network with them, and this is what I do, and say, who do you know that's out there as a facility manager that's really good, but they're just not happy where they're at? Maybe they're not being treated well or, mm -hmm. and so on. I, I love to work with people and treat them with respect and pay them what they're worth and, and just build them up and encourage them. So people love to work with me. But I go to these placement services and say, who do you know that's great? but they're just not flourishing the way they should. And I get great referrals from that, as well as for the caregivers. Oh, very good. Yeah, Excellent. and we'll, we'll go through a lot more on that, but it is a lot of fun. Now, when we talk about the different levels, just to give you an idea, there's five levels, and level five is the high end. So you see this picture of a home on the right? Look at that thing. It's a beautiful home. Gorgeous. Now, that right there. Yeah, it is gorgeous. And that actually is not a, an official assisted living facility. That's actually Rod Stewart's house. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, now, he's he of a... age. <laughs> <laughs> he's of age, but I think he probably has a maid and a caretaker, but it's different. But it, I've seen homes just like that that are care facilities. Now, on the other hand, we got level one, which is something like this. Now, those are not assisted living facilities. <laughs> That's a that's a three-level trailer park right there, but yeah. I bring yeah. that up as a joke just to show you we don't want the low end. And the high end is great, but it just may not economically pay off to have a home 
that cost $8 million to buy when we could get the same effect for 800000 right, or less. So the real yeah. sweet spot to this whole thing is right in the middle, that level three and four. And I am being very specific on that, and that's a part of what I, I share with people is when we talk about level one, definitely not. Level two, it's okay. We can make money. It's just it's kind of like owning a house in, a, in the bad end of town, and we can make money, and the cash flow is great, but I want to be in a nicer place, a place that I would want mom to come. So that's level three and four. And the reason why I have the two levels there is because four is better than three, and it's actually good to have two of these, Sharif. So if you're doing this yourself, if you have a level three and a level four, those people who can't afford level four, we can move them into our level three facility. Those who can want something nicer, move them into the level four. So it's a great combination, and I really think that's a good sweet spot for it there. But, but you're still talking these are residential homes, really? Uh, oh, yeah. Five bedrooms, right? Okay. okay good. Yeah, and, and really square feet is a big part of it because, uh, you know, I've seen 10-bed facilities licensed in 1,600-square-foot homes. Now, that's a little wow. crowded, right? That yeah, and that's... That's typically your level one or level two. It's just not comfortable. Can you do it? Yeah. Do I want to do it? No. The the ten bed facility that I just purchased last week is thirty nine hundred square feet. Yeah, so that's that's, that's good. That's Great some size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do I finance it? That's a big question that people always have. So you know, first you can just control the real estate. You know, buy it or lease it. So you don't have to own it. We can just do a long term lease. We talked a little bit about that. But banks do lend money on these kind of properties. Uh, we know the banks are a little hesitant to lend, but when you mix real estate with the business, the SBA gets involved, and that's the Small Business Administration. They do have plenty of money. It's a government-guaranteed loan, so the banks like to deal with it because the government's actually guaranteeing their loan, and they're lending money. I, I put 4 to 6% for 25 years because those are very common and typical terms in this day and age. Uh, residential, if you could get it, you could get it down to 3% and so on. But I think 4 to 6% getting a bank loan guaranteed with SBA is very realistic. And then private lenders, there's people out there with money in the bank earning half a percent. Or they've got money in the stock market and they just hope that it's a good year. You know, they don't know. But if you can say to somebody, I'm going to pay you 6 or 7 or 8% and it's secured by real estate, and they're even participating in, in the ability to feel good about they're doing something good, it's there's a lot of money out there that people are willing to accept six seven eight percent for so yes. how do I finance it let's go to the next level some of you right now have assets and you're just not leveraging them you're not using them and one of the big ones right here and Sharif put this website on here I highly encourage you to write it down www.iplangroup.com I P L A N G R O U P dot com this is a, a company and Sharif you can talk about them if you want yeah. but they help yeah go ahead yeah, iPlan Group is an IRA company. They do self-directed. If you have your own business, like you're running the residential care facility, you can start what's called the solo 401k, which is the individual 401k, where where you can actually roll your regular 401k when you have a job into that solo 401k, and and you can borrow from it to expand your business. This is huge, and iPlan Group charges a lot less than any other IRA company. They have a complete understanding of uh, residential care facilities, mobile homes, etc. So they're very well versed on how to invest your money in real estate. And the fact that they just charge one flat fee that's lower than anybody else, and you can do all your transactions through that, through that IRA account, is huge. You know, with my private fund and all what we do with the seminars, everybody's keeping ask, you keep asking me, what IRA should I use? What company should I use for self-directed? Just go to iplangroup.com, give them a call, tell them you're on a webinar with Sharif, Marawar, and Jean, and, and they will take care of you. Uh, we, the CEO was in the last event, and she did the presentation also. She was awesome. So go ahead. Very good. So use your IRAs, guys. And maybe you don't have money in your IRA, but somebody else does that you know. They're sitting on the money not doing anything. You could turn them on to iplan group. They're now in a position where they can lend you the money out of their IRA. So there's lots of ways to do this, and I know in Arizona we've been buying as many single-family homes as we can in the last three, four years. So now if you bought the home for 50000 and it's worth 100000 you paid cash when you got in, and now you have all this equity, there's lenders who you can borrow money against the home that you own, and it might be rental property. The lenders are back out for those type too. So we can finance in many different ways, but some of you are saying, yeah, 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 but what if I don't have money or I don't have credit? Well, I've got a plan for you. 
As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you one that I just did. Don't need have credit, don't need cash. I'll show you exactly how it's done. So what are our options? You can purchase it with your own funds if you have it. You can put down a down payment and finance it with an SBA loan. You can lease a property long term. That's a great way to do it. You can finance it with private financing or even your own IRA, or you could joint venture to access the cash or credit that you don't have that you need. So I'm going to go through these and kind of walk through them with you so you see how the numbers work. If you have the money, and let's use the 500000 as kind of a, a number, a benchmark as for our case study here. Let's just say it costs 500000 to buy the real estate and fix it up and start the business. It's five hundred grand. If you have five hundred grand, you buy it, you paid five hundred. you don't have a $5,000 a month payment. So in the scenario I went through before, 30000 gross income minus 15000 in expenses, then we subtracted the 5000 for the PITI. Well, if you're using your own money, you don't have to subtract it. You keep it. So the 5000 is now added to the 10000 so you get 15000 a month. Times 12 months is $180,000. Pause. If you invest in 500000 and you get one hundred and eighty grand a year, what's your rate of return? It's a whopping 36%. Now, I'm guessing there's a lot of you listening saying that is wonderful. That would be all I need to do. Exactly right. But it gets better than that. Let's go another route. Finance it, leverage, put down 25%, get an SBA loan for the other 75%. $125,000 down, that's your 25% down payment. Now, before I go any farther, some of you right now are saying, Gene, I have 125 in my retirement account. I don't have enough money to retire. And here's the deal. What you don't have is the knowledge or education. Because if you've got a buck and a quarter, you could do what I'm about to show you right here and more than likely retire fat and happy much better and much faster than you ever thought possible. So just think that through for just a minute. 100 and quarter down, you get a loan for the 375, 6% for 25 years. Your payment, PITI, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance is 3,000. Now, before I did the calculation with 5,000 PITI, so that means you get two back. So 10 plus 2 is 12,000 a month times 12 months. It's 144,000. Not as much as the 180,000, but you only put up 125. So if you could invest 125,000 and get a return of 144,000 each year, 12 grand a month, my guess is many of you listening could retire comfortably on that. Many of you are thinking I should have done that a long time ago. No, we can't go backwards, let's just go forward. So what's the rate of return there? Well, if you've only invested 125 and you're getting more than 125 each year, it's more than 100%. It's actually 115%. And if you like that, you'll love this one. This is where you don't have any cash or credit invested at all. So it's not you, it's somebody else. You have the knowledge. You put the deal together, and you're going to cash in your chips on it. So in this case, a partner provides the money or the credit. Same $500,000. let us say they lend you the money. Maybe it's out of their IRA. And maybe you pay an outrageous amount. You're paying them 10%. I want to be outrageous on this so you see you can even do it. You don't have to pay 10%. But if you did, that's 50000 a year. That's a little over 4000 a month plus taxes and insurance, there's your 5000 So the same scenario I gave you before, 30000 minus 15 for overhead, minus 5 for your principal interest taxes and insurance, still leaves you with 10 But remember, you have nothing invested. So if you've got nothing invested and you're making money, what's your rate of return? Infinite. That's my favorite rate of return. They never offer that at the bank, though. <laughs> So think about that. If you did that and you're saying, that's outrageous, cut it in half. You could even give your investor half of your profit. Give them five grand a month on top of their 10%, and you're still doing well. You're still making five grand a month. So five to 10,000 a month doing one deal, you can do this. So the next question is, well, how fast can I do it? Well, let me walk you through it. Let's go the hard route. Buy the land, design the building, build it from scratch, 12 to 24 months. Let's cut it in half. Buy an existing house, single level, five bedrooms, three baths, remodel it, get it licensed, six to 12 months, better, but this is the sweet spot. Now, I had this in gold, but it didn't show up as well, but put an arrow or star next to this one. Buy or lease an existing licensed home. Sharif, you and I were having this conversation earlier, and you're saying, why would somebody sell one of these? It's just like any motivated seller. Sometimes people sell because they'd rather have a lump sum of cash instead of the cash flow. Maybe it's because they're tired of doing it. I will say this. There's people that have started these homes. They bought a property or they took their existing home. They got it licensed, and their plan was, I'm going to move people into my home, and I'm going to take care of them myself, and I'm going to charge them 3000 a month. And before they know it, they're a prisoner in their own home. 
you know, yeah. they've got three people that they're they're cooking their food, taking care of everything, and they're saying, I didn't want this. That's not what I planned to do. They just mm. didn't have a good business plan. I'm not going to do that. I'm not moving people into my home. I'm not going to take care of them myself. This is a business. So they're highly motivated, but they did all the hard work of getting the license, getting the house ready, and now I can walk in and buy it at a discount because it has all the right things wrong. So the motivation there, and this is the sweet spot, three to six months, you can get it done. And I, I for want, those I of you, highlight something. Sure. I highlight. Go. You said you will buy it at a discount, but I want to highlight to everybody listening that the person you're buying from could be making a profit, but it's a discount to the potential to what you can take the property to in terms of income. Am I right? You're exactly right, because we had this conversation earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. We were running the numbers, and it's like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and it's so much fun because, you know, we understand numbers, and I think when you understand something, you look at it, and you ask this question, why would somebody do it? And I said, you know what, Sharif, when a deal is really good, I don't ask the person, why are you doing this? I just take the deal down, and at the end, if I'm interested, I'll ask them, why did you just sell it to me at this outrageous discount? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but I'm not going to ask them beforehand because then they might wake up from their coma or whatever they're in. <laughs> All right. So here's the next one. Some of you are saying, Gene, this sounds great, but I just want to own the real estate. I'm all about real estate. Beautiful. You buy the house. I'll lease it from you. As, a, as the manager and the owner of that facility, I'll run the business and I'll lease the house from you for 10 years with 10-year renewals. Triple net, I'll pay the property taxes, the insurance. I'll take care of all the maintenance. The AC blows up. I'll pay for it. Why would I be willing to do that? Because I don't have to get the property. You've already got it. I'm just walking into it. So you may be saying you want to buy the real estate. Great. I'm willing to lease it if it's the right one. So if you do that, you can get cash flow within one to two months. Or you want to make your life even easier, you know, join the syndication. Right? Once we put this together, Sharif and I, if you're just saying, I just want to earn money on my money, just I'll give you the money, you'll be making money within 30 days, 6 7 8%. So there's lots of ways, and you can do it very quickly, but that sweet spot, if you want to do this as a business, that three to six months, very realistic. Or, and I put this in red, you could pass this up and let somebody else make all the money. I mean, let's face it. Somebody's going to do it. It's either Sharif or me or you, but somebody's going to do it. And with 10,000 people a day for the next 17, 18 years turning 65, there's so much opportunity. It's just incredible. There's actually over 2,000 of these homes in Maricopa County right now, and that's just the homes with 5 to 10 residents. That's not the facilities with 100 people or 500 people. That's just homes, 2,000 of them, and we need more and more and more. So huge opportunity. So knowledge is the key to all of this, and you, you know that from you know, listening to Sharif and learning from him. He and I have known each other for years, and he's such a wonderful teacher, just a fountain of wisdom, but you're probably asking, how can I learn more? Well, I think the best way to learn something isn't by listening or reading, it's by doing. Um, you know, going to the concert is a lot more informative and fun than just getting the CD and listening to it. So I'm going to invite you to come on out to a training. We're doing a field training here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm going to give you a date and location and all of that. And the reason why we're doing it in Phoenix is I want to teach you, but then I want to show you. So we're going to literally get in the vehicle, and we're going to go to the facility. You're going to meet the facility manager. You're going to walk through the home. You're going to see the residents. You're going to see the caregivers. We're going to go through everything so you can see it. So we'll go through working homes. Then we're going to look at some that are available right now. And we're going to go through some and say, here's why we can't do it here. You know, they say it's a facility, but we can't get it licensed because one block away is a home, and they don't even know that it can't be licensed, but they're trying to sell it as this. They don't know why. So we're going to walk through properties that are available. We're going to analyze the numbers because I think the best way to learn anything is by actually doing it. But it's yeah, a very limited class size. ALF here is assisted living facility, which is same as residential care facility. The ALF is for assisted living facility, just to be clear. Thank you. Yeah, in Arizona, that's what we call it. In different states, it's called different things. So you might hear assisted living facility or residential care facility, but thank you. It's not alien life form, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it is a limited group size because, you know, I'm going to get one vehicle that we can go out and see these properties in. We're going to be in a class, and I want to have some interaction. So we're keeping the, the class size down, and uh, that's very important to me. 
Part of it, by the way, Sharif, if you ask me to give them a little idea, we're going to get together. It's going to start on a Thursday at noon. We're going to go from noon until 5. And then on the Friday, we're going to go 9 to 5. On Saturday, we'll go for another day where we're going to go out in the field and we're going to see the properties and meet people. So it'll be a lot of fun. So let me walk you through this. This is that deal that I just closed last week. There's the sign, by the way. In most care facilities, you're not going to see a sign. They just look like a home. This one happens to have a sign in the front. It was called Adagio House, and I'm changing it to Adagio Gardens. So you see that? We're just going to paint it over there and put a new phone number on it. Everything else will stay the same except for we're going to walk through and do some things to the property that I'll show you. But here's the HUD-1. Here's the financials on it. We bought the real estate for 450000 I borrowed 516000 Hold it, Gene. How can you borrow more than what you're paying for the house? Well, if you know what you're doing, you can do that. So I'm buying it for 450 and I'm borrowing 516000 which brings us down to the bottom, cash to borrower. I don't know if you know this, but you can actually walk away from the closing with cash in your hand. And in this case, it was $66,000 and change. Now, I didn't get to keep it all, and I'll give you the details of that in just a minute. But if you like the idea of getting paid at the closing, this is where I'm not putting in money. I'm getting money out at the closing and the cash flow. So here's the property, you can see it. And by the way, all those palms, they're going away. I've actually got the uh, handyman out there tomorrow. He's taking out those palms. They're just kind of big and overgrown. Uh, mm. We're gonna really dress up the front here. There's two fountains in the front and in the back, there's a beautiful pool. But beyond the pool, you see the gazebo and the yard. That whole yard is gonna become a garden. The gazebo, I'm gonna take it and move it to the side. There's gonna be a big, That's huge 10-foot fountain out there. There's going to be uh, just lush gardens. I'm gonna ask the residents, what are your favorite plants? I'm gonna plant them, put a bench out there and walkway. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want them to feel so comfortable and so loved while they're in the home that they're never gonna to wanna to leave, that they're gonna be there for years and years and years. Each one of those people is worth 3000 a month to me, so I want them to feel really good and stay for a long, long time. So that's what we're doing, and I just want to walk through the numbers. The current financials on that, the day I bought the business, so this is day one, 24000 at gross income. So that's 10 people. That's $2,400 a month average income. That's less than the national average. So we'll be raising that, but we'll put the garden in first. Expenses, 14000 That's the caregivers, the facility managers, the food, the insurance, and so on. So that is $10,000 NOI, which stands for net operating income. Now, the big piece that's not in there yet is what does it cost for the debt service? That always comes after the NOI. And we'll go through these numbers and make sure you know how to understand them in detail. But 4000 for the debt service leaves $6,000 net. So that's the money in my pocket each month, six grand a month for putting the deal together. Now, the next column right here, it says, well, and by the way, that's 72,000 a year. So if you're not making at least that, do one of these deals and do it. Project it. And I'm trying to be conservative here, guys, because I know what I'm gonna do to the property. It's got the right things wrong. It's got a big backyard that could become a garden. Do some things on the inside of the house to make it nicer. I'll bring things up. My facility manager is actually a nurse. That's a, a big plus. Doesn't have to be, but he is. I made sure to pick one that is. Uh, it's a big plus. So that's going to allow me to raise the rent to an average of $3,000 per person. So that 10 beds times 3,000 is 30,000, which is exactly what I shared. Expenses are the same. The expenses don't go up, but your income certainly did. So the net operating income is now 16,000. That 6,000 extra goes straight to that line Debt service stays the same. It just puts more money in your pocket, which doubled your net from seventy-two to one hundred and forty-four thousand a year. Just dream on that for a minute. Just pause. It's pretty cool, yes. isn't it? So when I say five to ten thousand a month, you absolutely can do that. I just showed you the the numbers on a deal that I just did. So let me go through this. This is the business part. I said I paid four fifty for the real estate. I paid fifty thousand for the business. So when I negotiated it, right, when we talk about the fax system, when I negotiated it, I negotiated the real estate and the business 500000 I just determined to break it down at four fifty and 50000 for various reasons, and I'll explain one. The purchase price of the business was 50000 but they have security deposits. Some of the residents have security deposits. So I get a credit of $18,050 at the closing. And they collect rent throughout the month. It's not always on the first. It's when they first come in. They first enter into the facility. So I had credit of $6,700 for the month of May. So the $1,800 plus the $6,700 is credit to me. So instead of me paying $50,000, I actually got a credit. So what we really gave her was $25,000. Awesome. So 
let's go through it. The real estate was 450. We had funding of 516, which gave me 66,000 at the closing. The 66,000 at the closing, 50,000 to buy the business, but I got a credit back of 24,760. So the closing, I ended up with 40,760 wired to my account. That's a good day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's just so sweet. And actually, since then, I've now owned it for about a week. I've collected uh, just about thirteen thousand dollars in income for this month, which the bills aren't due till the end of the month, right? So that's fifty-three thousand dollars in the bank account. That's it's it's a good day. So, and if you like this, if this is sounding good, I mean, you absolutely can do this. This is a deal where it was 100% financed, 40000 cash at the closing in my pocket, 6000 now up to 12000 per month later, and I've got the future appreciation of the real estate and the land and everything that goes with it. I mean, that's cash now, cash flow, and cash later, and I think that's what everybody wants when it comes to being in real estate itself. I mean, that's what it's all about. So what's it worth to learn something like this? I mean... The ability to get forty grand in your pocket on the first deal, that means to me it's worth at least the forty grand. But the ability to get seventy two thousand plus a year in income, my goodness, that's retirement money. You, anybody could retire on that. Nice. What is that worth? I mean, I know, Sharif, you know I've been training people for twenty years and I've done it for all the biggest names and I won't name them, Trump, and others. <laughs> <laughs> all the way through and they charge lots and lots of money and then they hire me to actually do the training so yeah. when you and I got together I said to you very specifically I don't want to charge large amounts of money if we don't have to and we agreed and we said you know what let's make this very affordable something that everyone can do and we determined that we would do this for a very reasonable forty nine ninety five, and that's for yeah. the training itself in the field and you and I both felt very good about that yeah. Then we also said, you know, while we're doing this presentation, let's give them some incentive to take action. So we said, anybody who decides to do this right now, we're going to make it real easy and just give you a thousand dollar discount. So you get the CMREI discounted price, making it thirty nine ninety five. Yeah. So that's real simple, very clean, but it's limited space. I mean, you all can appreciate that. This isn't going to be hundreds of people at this. We just can't do that. It's a very intimate event, and uh, so that's the way we're doing it. So, so here's here's the deal. Uh, on the screen, you're going to be seeing a phone number and an email address. Call or email and do it. You know, get started. Sign up. This class is coming up. It's a very limited space. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's two plus days of training because I designed it so that you can fly in or drive in on Thursday if you'd like to. We're going to start at noon and we're going to go until five. Then we're just going to enjoy each other's company that evening a little bit. Then on Friday, so stay over Thursday night. Friday, we're going to start at 9 and go till 5. And then Saturday, we're going to start there at 9 o'clock, and I'm going to bring the van. We're going to get in. We're going to go out in the field for the day, and we're going to learn by doing and seeing things that way. Then you can stay over Saturday night if you'd like, or you can fly out that night. It's totally up to you. I've got a special deal worked out at the hotel, the Doubletree Hotel right at the airport. So the shuttle will pick you up. You don't need a rental car. Breakfast is included. It's $89 a night. So worked it all out to make it real simple and easy for everyone who really does want to get involved. So at this point, Sharif, I know I've shared a lot, and I'm guessing you might have a few questions. This is awesome. Thank you, Gene. Uh, you're, I, I love your pace. You have a lot of energy, and it's just a lot of details. So, you know, people have to understand, you know, it's been, we've been doing the commercial roundtable event for three years. And there's been a lot of demand for people wanting coaching, wanting somebody to take them by the hand to show them how to actually put a deal together. But a lot of my students have um, residential homes and they're trying to convert them. And I want you guys to know, you can do a lot of conversions without rezoning, but there's a critical mass to make money. And that's what Gene is going to show you. At any level, I always want you to know what you're doing, so get the maximum training and let's make it happen. We want people that take action that are resourceful. The difference between a successful person and an unsuccessful person is the successful person takes the challenges of life and turn them into opportunities. Thank you, until next time.